Hi, I'm James, and today on my desk I have this, a MacBook Pro late 2013 Retina machine, uh, which was a customer system that was brought to me, which unfortunately has been diagnosed with main board failure or logic board failure. Uh, the customer opted not to have it repaired and asked if I would be interested in purchasing it. So I have bought this because my MacBook Air needs replacing for the testing work I do, and this seemed like a good candidate. The machine itself will actually power on, uh, but unfortunately never gets to the Apple logo or shows any sign of life uh, other than just spinning the fan internally. We get no boot sound, no display, no external video output and so on. As such, I have purchased this, which is a earlier 2013 mainboard with only four gigs of RAM. Um, normally I would look for a like-for-like -like replacement, but since I'm just gonna use this for basic work uh, in my home office, I, I didn't feel a need to do this and was able to pick this up at a very reasonable price secondhand tested on eBay. So I'm going to be opening up the machine, fitting the board and seeing what condition everything else is in. So with the laptop on the workbench, our first job is to pick up a 1.2mm pentalobe screwdriver bit and remove the screws from the base of the machine. Uh, this machine is in fairly good condition overall. There are a few scratches on the base, uh, but the lid and the keyboard are in very good condition, palm rest as well. Uh, it does look like there is some very, very slight breakdown of the coating on the screen. Um, so depending on how that is, I may remove that later as well, uh, just to remove that finish from the screen and just leave it as the glass underneath. So we are going to get these screws removed. Uh, as always, I just put these to the side in the order that I have removed them from, just so that I can replace things in exactly the same positions they were removed from. With those screws removed, it's then a simple case of just getting our fingers in and lifting the base panel off the back like so. So now that we're inside the machine, our first thing to do is to peel back this battery connector sticker and we want to just quickly lift and disconnect the battery like so. We should be able to replace the board with the battery all in situ, which is great because it's a bit of a pain to remove it. Now, having switched our screwdriver to our Torx T5 bit, our first job is going to be to remove the SSD. I believe this is a 512 gigabyte model in this machine, which was one of the reasons I was quite keen to have it, as the larger capacity drives are quite nice to have. So with that removed, next we have a pair of screws here, which cover this little plate for this daughterboard connector. And what I'm actually going to do is remove both of these and then just pry up the end of the connector to free that. With that done, our next job is to slide out the other connector for this daughterboard to the side here and push that out of the way. With that done, I then want to just get the pry tool in underneath these two speaker cables and just lift those until I get to the plug. And so there is a little tape under that one. So lift that cable up there. And the same with this one, get in and pop up to disconnect that cable there. The microphone connector can also be found in this corner. So we are going to peel back the tape from that. Lift up the catch and gently pull out that connector as well. In the top right here, we also need to remove the DC jack connector as we are not going to be, or the MagSafe connector I should say, as we are not going to be removing that from the machine. We just need to run our pry tool underneath there where it's stuck down 
and then gently pull that out from its connector on the main board and then disconnect the screen by lifting this little latch and using it to slide out the screen connector. Looking down towards the battery, we then want to peel back this tape, lift this catch and disconnect the touchpad and then the same here which I believe is for the keyboard. We can then turn to the fan and this is held in with three screws. So we will remove these. We will then disconnect the fan cable, gently sliding that out. And we have to disconnect this connector here, which is, I believe, for the webcam. And this runs under this rubber and across the top of the fan shroud here. So we're going to peel that out of the way as well. In the top corner of the heatsink, we have a small screw, which is actually a Phillips head screw. So we're going to use a different bit to remove that. And now we're ready to remove the screws that hold in the logic board itself. These are Torx T5 screws. And with those removed, we should be ready to lift out our logic board. So to do this, I'm going to just lift here with the heat pipe. We can see the heat sink and fan pulls up here. So we want to slide out the fan and then slide out our logic board. And realizing I had missed one connector in that top corner, easily dealt with and we can put our board to one side. Our new logic board comes with the heatsink already attached, but without this rubber. So we are going to remove that and position it on our new board. Before refitting it, I am then going to remove this shroud from the fan to give things a quick clean. So the shroud on the fan is held in with these screws. With that done, I can then refit the shroud. With our fan cleaned up, we are now going to slot it back together with the mainboard. Attach the screw between the two and plug back in the fan cable, pressing down the latch. With that done, we're now ready to reinstall it into the chassis. With that done, uh, we are now onto the most awkward job of the whole thing, which is reinserting the main board into the chassis. So to do this, we need to make sure the end ports are pressed down correctly and make sure the headphone jack on the end here is located in its socket. We then need to ensure that the cables around the board are not being trapped underneath it. So making sure this one is free, microphone and speaker here, battery, keyboard, touchpad, 
speaker and webcam are all pulled out of the way and with that done you can then line up and press down these parts of the board. So now it's a simple task of refitting screws. So we're going to start on the main board. And then to test the system, we are just going to connect up the absolute minimum components. So in this case, I am going to connect the touchpad, even though it's technically not required. The keyboard, getting it to go in straight and flat is a little bit tricky. And then the MagSafe connector and the screen. Nothing else is necessary at this stage. I just want to check that the machine will switch on and give me an output. So with the system propped up on its side, we can see most of the uh, components are still not connected, but we are going to hold down the Alt key and plug in the MagSafe connector. And when we do that, we should see the system power on. Screen has received some power. And we get the boot menu, which is looking for Wi-Fi networks to boot recovery. So I'm going to finish putting this machine together and then we're going to see what condition it's in. So with that done, we're ready to boot the machine up again and holding down D, we are going to boot it into the diagnostic mode to see what it makes of the condition of the machine. And having completed the test, we have the excellent news that there are no issues found and this machine now appears to be in good health. So having booted from USB, uh, wiped the system of any of the previous user's data, we are now going to go for disk utility. And what I want to do is select the internal SSD, which is now blank. And I want to repartition this drive uh, because I want to divide this up into multiple drives as I'm going to be running this with uh, Big Sur and also some older versions of Mac OS as well and potentially uh, trying to also run a hacked version of Monterey. So what I'm going to do is divide the drive into four and we want to make the main drive the largest at 200 gigabytes and then split down the three remaining partitions to around 100 gigabytes each. 
uh, which gives me enough space for all of my installers on the main Big Sur install. So from there I can hit apply. So with all said and done, what we now have is one of my preferred MacBooks with a configuration which is really useful for me and the way I work. So switching it on now and holding Alt. And I have the choice between Big Sur, Catalina and High Sierra, which are the main Mac OS versions which I end up working with, and also Windows 10 which I've installed on here as well. Uh, all of these work really nicely on the machine since it has that large SSD. Um, the only disappointment and really if this had been a 2015 machine I would possibly be making this actually my main work laptop because having the ability to run such a wide range of macOS versions and Windows makes it a really versatile machine um, even more so than the later models uh, particularly since it isn't limited to just USB-C ports. This particular machine itself is not doing too badly on the battery front, showing it still has around 88% of its original design capacity, despite the fact it is the original battery in here from 2014. And while these are getting older machines, uh, I wouldn't actually discount the 2013 and particularly the 2015 machines for uh, people who are after a Mac on a budget. Um, being limited to Big Sur at the moment isn't a major factor, um, the 2015s being able to run Monterey is even better, but you will have a few years of security uh, updates for the operating system. Um, I would perhaps, you know, if I was going to use this more seriously, have wanted to get one which had at least 8GB of RAM. But for basic usage, uh, these are still pretty responsive, pretty reasonable machines. The Haswell processor isn't bad, the Iris, Pro graph oh, sorry, the Iris graphics in it is acceptable. It's not going to be a powerhouse, but the build quality of the machines uh, is really good. I also really like the repairability of these models compared to later ones. You don't have the uh, security chips that the later MacBook Pros feature. Uh, you have the upgradable SSDs, RAM obviously is on the main board, but other than some issues like the screen coating breaking down, uh, these tend to be, particularly in 13 inch form, fairly robust laptops. I do find these aluminium unibodies don't necessarily always take knocks uh, the best, um, and because these screens are glass fronted they can be a bit more susceptible to cracking than some laptops, but if you want a MacBook but don't want to spend new money um, or have a limited budget, you can pick up the 2015s, I believe under £300, maybe a bit more depending on condition, and they make a perfectly good usable machine still without going to the all USB-C uh, connectivity and without the keyboards which affect the sort of 2016, 2017 models which could be really quite unreliable and would be a concern going forward. So I hope you found this video interesting and um, do let me know in the comments if you have and if you've enjoyed watching it and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as I post them. Thanks for watching.